In this video, we will try to give some supplemental explanation for the question uh, show that L1 is undecidable, where L1 is the set of strings that are descriptions of Turing machines, such that the language of that Turing machine, the size of it is three. <clears throat> okay, so we did this proof in a previous video, uh, but we wanna go into a little bit more detail to show what are the details of this reduction and why does it work. Okay, so again, our idea was to, we want to reduce ATM to L1 so that if there is a decider for L1, we can construct a decider for ATM. Okay, so what does a decider for L1 do? So a decider for L1 says yes if the size of the language of M is 3. What does this mean? It means that M accepts three strings and only three. Okay, similarly, a decider for L1 says no if M accepts zero to two or four plus strings. Okay, this is all well and good, but we're not asking for the question, um, to solve the problem ATM, we're not asking how many strings does that M accept. We're asking does M accept W, that's ATM. ATM is the problem, um, does M accept W. So the proof idea, the concept behind the proof, was to say that we can construct another machine that only accepts exactly three strings when M accepts W. Okay, so let's, let's go into some of the details of that proof. Uh, let me just give the outline of that proof here. So A was on input MW. Notice M here is the M that we're wondering, does M accept W? That's this M. Step one was we used, uh, not A, let's see. We want to use the description of M to construct a new Turing machine. M, M, actually we used M1, so I'll stick with M1. M prime works just as well, but let's call it M1. M1. Okay, so what does M1 do? Let me describe it first, and then we'll get back to the proof. So this is like tangent, right? So what does M1 do? M1 will simulate M on W. Okay, that's the first thing that M1 wants to do. M1 wants to find out, does M accept W? Okay, notice that in this simulation, M1 could run forever. If M runs forever on W, M1 will run forever because it's simulating M, okay? We don't care though. We're never actually going to run M1. We're just going to feed its description to our decider for L, is that our L1, for L1. We're gonna feed its description to, L, to the decider for L1. Okay, so it's never getting run. It's just getting fed into this uh, decider for L1 that we're assuming exists. We're saying if it exists, then all of this is possible. 
Okay, so the first thing M1 does is it simulates M on W. So then if M runs forever on W, then M1 runs forever. Okay, this is possible. Otherwise, if M rejects W, then M1 can also run forever. Um, what's M gonna, M1 gonna do? It can run forever or it can just halt and reject. Either one is fine. Let's just say that M1 halts and rejects. Okay, you'll see in a minute why either one is fine, why we don't care what it does when M rejects W. What we care about is if M accepts W, what does M do? Sorry, if M accepts W, M1 accepts its input, which was X, only if X is one of three specific strings. Why do we care? Because we need the language M1 to have size, the language of M1 to have size three. We need it to have size three so that we can use our decider for the language L1. So this is really important. The size of the language of M1 is going to be three if M accepts W. That's how we're doing this reduction. So how do we do that? How do we make the size of the language of M1 be three? Well, we accept its input only if it's one of three strings. This way, this way, uh, the only strings that it can possibly accept are gonna be these three strings. And it's always going to accept when its input is one of those three strings. This means the size of its language is exactly three. How do we choose these three strings? Um, it doesn't really matter. One way is to uh, assume an ordering on the strings in sigma star. Okay, here all we're doing is making it so that we can choose three strings that it will accept. Exactly three strings, no more, no less. So, for example, if sigma were to be 0, 1, then the ordering might be, notice there's more than one possible ordering, but let's order these strings 0, 1, 0, 0. Okay, additionally, we could then go on to have, uh, let's do 0, 1, we could have one zero, one one, zero zero zero. Okay, so this is this is our ordering. So these are the first three strings in the ordering. Okay. So then we define M1 to accept strings zero one and zero zero. This means that the language of M1 is this set of strings. So the size of the language of M1 is clearly three. Okay, this is an example given a specific sigma, but you can see now given any sigma, we could find an ordering on the strings. Um, we could take the order of the symbols listed in sigma uh, here, sigma is a set, but when we actually write the description of a Turing machine on the tape, there is a first symbol. Even though it's a set, one appears to the left of every other symbol. So there is a way to order these symbols, and then there's a way to order the strings. So all we're saying is we're going to find M1 to accept the first three strings from this ordering, and we're going to allow it to accept these three strings only if M accepts W. Okay, so let's finish the proof and see if this makes sense. So I'm going to rewrite it. 
AR decider for ATM is on input MW. We're going to construct M1 from M as follows. What does M1 do? On input X. Notice X is not related to W. X could be any input. This machine is getting constructed so that we can use its description. So we're saying whatever its input is on input X, let's call this I, simulate M on W. If M accepts W, Remember on the last screen I said, if M doesn't accept W, we don't care what happens next. If M runs forever on W, then M1's gonna run forever on X. Um, if M rejects W, then M1 can reject, that's fine. So, but if M accepts W, we want to basically assume not B, A. Assume A fixed ordering on strings in sigma star. If X is equal to here I'm going to use our example. Okay, so we would generalize it to the first three strings in any ordering, but here I'm going to use our specific example. So if x equals 0, or x equals 1, or x equals 0, 1, the first three strings in the ordering we have when sigma is 0, 1, accept. Otherwise reject. So that's the end of the description for M1. That's what M1 does. Two, we're going to run D, which we had defined to be the decider for this language L1 on M1W, not M1W. Just M. M1. This one just takes just the machine description. If it accepts, accept. Else, reject. Okay, so let's remind ourselves what this is doing. M1 is constructed specifically um, on every running of A. So A runs, it gets M and W. From M, we construct M1. What does M1 do? M1 would simulate M on W. If M accepts W, then M1 has a chance to accept X. Okay, only if M accepts W will M1 have a chance to accept X. When is it going to accept X? It's going to accept X when it's one of the first three strings in this ordering, when it's 0, or when it's 1, or when it's 0, 1. Okay, this is the description of M1. Then if M accepts W, if we pass into this phase, then M1 will accept exactly three strings. It will accept 0, 1, and 0, 1. If it's fed uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, it's going to reject. If it's fed 0, 0, 0, 0, it's going to reject. It's going to reject every other string other than these three strings. So the size of the language of M1 is 3, if M accepts W. What is the size of the language M1 if M does not accept W? So size of the language of M1 is 3 if M accepts W. Size of the language of M1, what is it if M doesn't accept W? 
Can M1 ever accept anything if M doesn't accept W? No. The only way it can get into an acceptance state is if M accepts W when it goes into the steps A and B. So if M fails to accept W, for example, if M runs forever, M1's gonna run forever. A machine that runs forever on its input can't accept the input. Okay, so if M ex does not accept W, um, because M ran forever on W, then M1 would run forever. If M rejects W, again, we said we could specify that M1 could run forever or M1 could just halt and reject. Either way, it's never going to accept anything. It's never gonna get into steps A and B if M fails to reject W. So then if it can't ever accept anything, its size is empty, its size is zero, its language is empty. Okay, so that's what M1 does. That's what it gives us. That's its purpose in this proof. Okay, so why do we need it? If this decider D exists, it can tell us how big or really what size the language has. Is it three or is it not three? Okay, that's what the decider can do. It's going to say yep if it's three and it's going to say nope if it's not three. So notice this empty is not three. So when we feed M1 to D in step two, if it accepted, it's because M accepts W. It's because the language of M1 was three and that happened because M accepted W. If it does not accept, if it rejects, it's because the language of M1 is not three. And specifically, because of the way we define M1, the size of its language is zero. It has the empty language. This happens only if M does not accept W. Okay, so this decider D allows us to decide ATM through the construction of M1. Hopefully that helps.